Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to calculate the area which defines the hyperbolic functions. Remember this area right here from the previous videos? Well, we know that when we define the hyperbolic functions like the hyperbolic sine or the cosine, t is actually twice that area. So we wanted to know the area so we can actually calculate the hyperbolic sine and cosine based upon the area. Now that's typically not what we do, but at least it helps us understand hyperbolic functions a little bit better. Now this will require some calculus, so stay, stay tuned here. Uh, first of all, notice that the area can be subdivided into area 1, which is this section right here, that's the triangular section, and area 2, which is the area between the two curves. So to find the first area, area 1, let's simply find the area of a triangle, which means it's half the base times the height, and of course the base here has to be equal to 1 because that's where the hyperbolic function crosses the x-axis at x equals 1. So it's 1 half times 1 times the height, and the height can be determined by the slope of this line multiplied times the distance to that point right here. So the distance, the run, is equal to 1, and the slope is going to be equal to m. Now how do we define the slope? Now the slope of this line right here is defined about where we pick that point. And that slope can then be defined by the run here, or the height here, which is the, the delta y or y sub p, and the run here. So it's the rise over the run. The rise is equal to y sub p. The run is equal to x sub p. So basically, the slope can be written as y sub p divided by x sub p. Now, the relationship between x and y at that point right here, since that point is on this line, can be defined by this function here. So y is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1, and therefore y sub p will be equal to the square root of x sub p squared minus 1. And so that's how we define the slope of the rise divided by the run, and that will then be area 1. 1 half times the slope, and that will be area 1. Now to find area 2, we need to integrate because it's between these two functions right here. So we're going to define a small little area element, dA, which is equal to the height times the width. The height is going to be y1, that's the top curve, minus y2, which is the bottom curve, times the width, dx. So we're going to find area 2 by saying it's an integral. We're going to integrate from 1 to x sub p in the x direction, and we're going to take the height of that small area element, y1 minus y2 times dx, and y1 is, going, is defined by the slope of this line times x, so that's m sub p times x. Again, m sub p can be defined by the square root of x sub p squared minus 1 for the rise and x sub p for the run. It's that ratio times x. So that's going to be y1. y2 can be defined by solving for y in this equation. y2, therefore, is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1. And so we have y1 minus y2 times dx. Now we're ready to integrate. The first integral is easy, so that's simply going to be m sub p x squared over 2 evaluated from 1 to x sub p from here to there. And so when plug in the upper limit and the lower limit, we get this. To integrate the second integral, that's a little bit harder, but we can find out how to do that. And so the integral of this is going to be equal to 1 half times x times the square root of x squared minus 1 minus the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 and we're going to evaluate that from 1 to x sub p. When plug in the upper limit, we get the following. So we replace every x by x sub p. That's the x value of that particular point. And again, we can pick any point here. And then we plug in the lower limit. But when we plug in the lower limit, when we plug in a 1 here, we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this goes away. Plug in a 1 here, we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. And plug in a 1 here, we get the natural log of 1, which is also 0. So end up with 0 minus 0 when we plug in the lower limit. So we can simply ignore that. So now we have the area, the total area of, no, so this is area 2 between these two curves, which is defined by this minus this. And then we have area 1, which is defined by that. So we add those two areas together, and that gives us the total area. And then all we have to do is multiply that times 2 and then evaluate the sine and the cosine or the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine in terms of the area. 
Of course, that is a lot of work. That's typically not how the hyperbolic functions are used, but at least you can see where that area comes from and how you can actually calculate that area and then plug that back into the hyperbolic functions to really evaluate them that way as well. So we can do it like this, or we can do it by using the definitions where the hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2, and you'll find that to be a much easier thing to do than to actually go through this process. But at least, this is how it's done.